Hello and welcome to Greyhound View. On this week's programme, we join recent competition winner Deirdre Clancy and friends on a night out at Shelbourne Park. Money matters, how the industry is booming. We preview the Laurels quarterfinals and look back at some of the heats from Saturday night, as well as our regular competition. But first, we review last Friday's semi-finals of the Grand National at Harold's Cross. Harold's Cross, the venue for the semi-finals of the BagotRacing.com Irish Grand National. A top field, chasing the prize of £8,000. Number one, switched to Plan B, owned and trained by Shem O'Donnell from Kilkenny. Now one of the English challengers, the favourite, Devs the Best, owned by Danny Riley, trained by Paul Young. Another English challenger, trained by Gary Baggs, this is Group Tycoon, owned by a syndicate, a top herder. Number four, a local runner, Vanilla Man owned by John O'Reilly from Dublin. In five, we have the reserve Broadway plane, trained by Seamus Cahill. And number six, Group Stinger, another home challenger, owned by Mary Kenny and Burris Lay, and trained by her husband Joe. Ready for the off, where Debs the Best, the favourite running from trap two, a lot depends on the break in this one, will Debs the Best get away from two? That's the big question. Here now behind the traps, ready for the off, and away they go to number three, Group Tycoon out fast, but Debs the best is at the back of the field and in trouble at this stage is Group Tycoon, leads around the opening corner, Vanilla Man in second place, switch to plan B is in third, Debs the best beginning to get a run down the back, first hurdle down the back straight, Group Tycoon in front, now switch to plan B moves me up to challenge, and Debs the best coming with a run, onto the final bends, and now switch to plan B on the outside of Group Tycoon, Debs the best closing rapidly in behind, switch to plan B, coming on the outside, 20 to 1 chance, coming to the line, and switch to plan B, getting there, a big upset in the first semi-final of the National. So switch to plan B, the Kilkenny dog, a big price in the market, winning this one. Switched to plan B in second place was Debs the Best and third Group Tycoon. Time 29.70. Before he ran his first hurdle race, you had faith in him? Oh, yeah, I had a great faith. I bought this dog off of, off of Waterford. Uh, he had been red carded in Waterford and I just took a chance on him that he might go over the hurdles. And from day one that we put him over the hurdles, we put him on the gallop in seven houses first and then brought him to Kilkenny. Then we brought him here to qualify one day, and he'd done 29.94 qualifying. 20 to 1. Were you totally shocked by that? Well, I wasn't... I, I, me knowing the dog, I probably wouldn't have thought it was 20 to 1 chance like, but on farm, what, you, what the public had seen, I suppose, he had to be 20 to 1 like, but I, I, I didn't, hadn't a penny on him myself. He saw a little racing done that I really don't know what trap he needs, you know. He came on the outside of him tonight coming home, so trap 3, he's drawn the final. Sure, he, he, he doesn't look to be flashing away like, you know, but... We'll just we'll have to play it by you take it from here like we don't you know you can't do nothing about the draw like any whatever box you get like you know now to the second semi-final here comes ken in trap one another of the gary bags challengers from across the water number two is kind of light a real veteran this one trained locally by thomas lynch here in dublin in three we have another english challenger the strongly fancied shop italy trained by seamus cahill He's the long odds favourite to win the event. Number four, another local runner, the second of Thomas Lynch's challengers, Slain Moore Amy, on offer at big prices. Then in five, all the way from Galway's, out of my mind, another veteran, but running extremely well. And number six, the favourite in this particular race, Autumn Empress, trained by Jer McKenna in Dublin, for England's Mick Parker. Much will depend on the traps as usual. Number three, Shop Italy, normally a fast starter. Will he get away in this one? Autumn Empress in six is also very strongly fancied here. We see the hair coming around the bend, up behind the traps and ready for the off. And Shop Italy is well away from three. Into the first hurdle, jumps it well. Autumn Empress on the outside and out of my mind between the pair of them. But down the back, out of my mind, just in front. Now Autumn Empress goes up on the outside. Autumn Empress from out of my mind. Number three, Shop Italy is... Closing again in third with here comes Ken in fourth. Three of them together at the third bend. Shop Italy has to give way there and it's now Autumn Empress from out of my mouth bumping between the front pair. And now on the outside here comes Ken coming with a run over the last and Autumn Empress puts in the best jump. Goes on to win it from out of my mind and it's very close for third. 
and the result, the winner was Autumn Empress, winning from out of my mind, and in third place, here comes Ken, time 30.16. Jeremy McKenna, you must be pretty happy with the trap draw. I am. Uh, uh, when I heard now she got trap six, I was absolutely delighted with it, you know. She badly wants the outside, and she's got her trap now, and it's all a bit of luck now. We, she should win it, you know. She's a bitch that can break fast and lead, or she can come from behind. Yeah, she, she, she's got it every way, you know. She's, she's a good, genuine sort. Uh, as you saw there at the third bend tonight, she could, any other dog would throw it up. She kept on going, you know, and she showed she, she, she won in length. She was going away from it then again, you know. You're a bit of a specialist in this Grand National, Jar. Oh, well, I don't know. I've won it a few times, so just keep my fingers crossed, you know what I mean? Uh, Yacht Club won it a good few years ago for my father, and, and then I won it last year for Elaine Parker as well, which is Autumn Maryland, and hopefully for a tour time this year with Autumn Empress. So it's the Parker family again and the, the Autumn Prefix? The Parker family and the Autumn Prefix, yeah. And the trap draw for the final of the BaggotRacing.com Irish National was made by Tig Harrington of the sponsoring company. The trap draw for the final of the BagotRacing.com Irish Grand National at Harold's Cross on Friday night. In one is Group Tycoon at 11 to 4. Two, Here Comes Ken at 16 to 1. Trap three, Switch to Plan B at 9 to 2. In four is the favourite, Deb's the best, 7 to 4. Five is Out of My Mind, the 33 to 1 outsider. And in trap six, Autumn Empress at 3 to 1. Final betting, what are you making favourite for the final? Well, Michael, in the final we're going to make uh, Deb's the best. Uh, favourite at 7 to 4. And we follow that with Group Tycoon, who's in the uh, one box at 11 to 4. And then we're going 3 to 1 Autumn Express. We're going 9 to 2 Switch to Plan B. 16 to 1 Here Comes Ken. And the outsider is, appropriately named, <laughs> out of my mind, at 33 to 1. If you were a punter rather than a layer on this particular one, what would you be backing for the final at those prices? Um, after seeing the two semi finals, Michael, I don't know if I'd have a bet, but if I had to, um, I would fancy Group Tycoon. I was impressed with him in the the first round. Uh, I know Shop Italy was beaten now in the semi, which will be a line of form with Group Tycoon. But I still at 11 to 4, I would fancy Group Tycoon. Certainly, if Deb's the best comes out, it should win. But that's the great imponderable of Greyhound Racing. Like, will it come out? And he's stuck in the middle of him. It's a difficult draw. Uh, which I made myself. Delighted to have put him in uh, trap four. A big date for your diary at Harold's Cross. And the track chairman, Cahill Curley, explains. November the 16th, Michael, uh, I would think, should be the mega night of racing in Harl's Cross. We are going to have a, a, a VIP list here that is going to be the envy, not alone of, of, uh, of, uh, of other doggy stadiums, but actually horsey stadiums, because uh, we're going to have our number one guest, Frankie DeTore, here. We are going to have Johnny Morta here. We're going to have Tommy Stack here. We're going to have uh, those uh, notorious punters, J.P. McManus and my brother, Barney Curley, along with the likes of Patsy Byrne and whatnot. And this mild night will be totally attributed to DAFA. That's spelled D-A-F-A. That's Direct Aid for Africa, which is a charity that uh, was formally introduced and organised by Barney and Frankie de Torre and John Gosden and uh, we're hoping for a night of nights on that night. We're going to have 11 races. The prize money is going to be a minimum of £3,000 per race, but may I stress at this stage that it's a two-for-one basis here. Two goes to the charity and one goes to the owner. But we're going to have 11 races, along with two semi-finals of the RSL 575, along with the get-out stakes, which is going to be increased in prize money. Melbourne Park's Margaret Walsh was on hand to greet recent competition winner Deirdre Clancy, who brought three friends with her to Shelburne to enjoy her prize-winning night out. It's more for the fun of the night that I like, and I had a couple of bets in that. Geraldine is also our first time here. I thought it was all, all outdoor. It's lovely. Very nice. The food's lovely.
Along with good food, betting was high on the menu for the quartet. And Deirdre's expertise in picking winners proved the point that she was no stranger to the dogs. And we have uh, another few here as well. A few pounds still here in the little kitty. And he's had all the other money in his pockets. <laughs> and Joe's gone downstairs for to do a few bets as well with the bookies. So yeah, we're winning all round. Dressed up, and you have a lovely meal. It's a restaurant service. You don't have to leave your table. You can place your bets, whether it be large or small. Um, you have a great, great view of, of the track. Um, all round, it's 100. percent You can't really fault it, and it's surprising for people that come along because they don't expect it to be, you know, so entertaining. And now for our competition. Who trained the winner of the 2001 Puppy Derby was last week's question. And the winner of a night out for two at Harold's Cross was Oliver Hines from Leaslip in County Kildare. And many congratulations to you, Oliver. Curraheen Park in Cork is renowned for its fabulous food. Anyone wishing to win a night out for two at the race course needs to answer the following question. In which year was the first running of the Irish Laurels? Callers from the Republic of Ireland should dial 1550 92 73 73 and from Northern Ireland and the UK the number is 0901 063 0642. Projections for this year's betting turnover are giving the greyhound industry cause to celebrate. Tote returns will be up by a staggering 25% compared to last year, and bookmaking turnover will be in excess of £43 million. Quite incredible when you consider the tracks were closed for two months due to the foot and mouth disease. The future looks bright for an industry which just six years ago was slipping into the doldrums. So how has it managed such a dramatic upturn in its fortunes? The industry has enjoyed particular success since 1995. Uh, Prior to that, between 87 and 95, there was a significant decline. Uh, in 87, the total betting statistics were about 37 million, and they had reduced year on year for eight consecutive years to about 23 million in 1995. So there was a recognition at that stage that there was something fundamentally wrong with the industry. And uh, in 1995, Pascal Taggart was appointed as chairman of the industry. And I suppose he set about a very, very clear strategy for the rejuvenation of the industry at that time. He recognised that the key to success within the industry was to provide a fun night's entertainment for people at a, at a low cost in a quality surroundings. That sounds very, very easy, but how was that then to be articulated into a defined plan? First of all, it involved a capital redevelopment programme to ensure that the facilities were up market to, to, to be able to cater for modern consumer needs. Uh, secondly, it would have involved ensuring that quality facilities were then put in place in terms of dining, uh, in terms of both corporate dining, restaurant dining and car rate, so that we could cater for each and every level of the market. And then the third thing which was key to ourselves and key to our own generation of funds was the implementation of a quality totalisator service. So in a place like Shelburne, you can sit in the corporate restaurant or in the corporate boxes and you can sit down and a person will come to you with a handheld computer betting terminal and you can place your bet. You don't even have to leave your seat. And that's very, very important in terms of driving the business and in driving and encouraging people to bet. Ideas may look good on paper, but they come at a price. Like anything, a strategy in itself isn't good enough. A strategy has to be backed by sound financial planning. And in 1995, 
the board had been going very, very badly, it was, it was difficult to see how the capital funding could be generated to achieve the aspirations of the board at that time. So they looked at the facilities and they looked at what was maybe surplus to requirements. And in particular, they looked at Harles Cross at the time, where there was approximately four acres surplus to the requirements of the stadium. And we achieved planning permission for in excess of 80 houses in Harles Cross. And that sale in itself achieved 10.6 million in 1999. That was followed on very, very shortly with the sale of Shelburne, 101 apartments in Shelburne for an excess of 6.6 .6 million in the current year. And various other sales of minor assets generated in excess of 20 million for the board. Over the last few years, the board have invested 10 million in the redevelopment of Shelburne, 9 million in the redevelopment of Cork, 7.5 million in Harris Cross. Those facilities have encouraged a new vitality and a new interest within the industry. The attendances in, in, in 1995 were uh, it, just less than 600,000 uh, persons attending on an annual basis. Uh, by 2002, we expect over a million people to be going greyhound racing. And in the current year, you know, around 900,000 people. And that's in spite of the closure and the effects of foot and mouth in the current year. The long-term prognosis of the industry is very, very good. The idea of hurdle racing basically is to bring that jumping element to, say, a flat scene. In addition, I suppose, a lot of people have this thing in their head that maybe at times dogs lose their focus on the flat. Uh, maybe they feel they're not actually putting all their heart into it. So the uh, jumps kind of lends itself to uh, the dogs basically putting more emphasis on chasing this hair and keeping their eye on the hair and it often has the effect that dogs can improve lengths following a couple of trials or races over the jumps and uh, in addition from time to time dogs can get so good at it that they just stick solely to hurdle racing there's plenty of money there for hurdle racing dogs and it's also very popular in England so there's a good market for hurdle dogs Okay, to prepare a greyhound for a hurdle race, uh, the owner or trainer will generally bring in that greyhound, walk them slowly through the hurdles. Once the dog gets a little bit used to going through the hurdles, the next step is usually to have somebody on the other side of the hurdle who will call the dog. If the greyhound seems to be making progress, the next step is to probably run the hare. Hopefully then, uh, the dog will begin to run a little bit sweeter. Now initially the dogs will probably jump that little bit high. I suppose practice makes perfect and after a couple of runs the greyhound will generally sweep through the hurdles rather than jump high over them. The next stage is the race. Fingers are caught and hopefully things will go well on the night. Welcome to Curraheen Park in Cork where last Saturday night, the second round of the Co-op Superstore's Irish Laurels was run. Some great action. Let's look back at the fastest winners. In Heat 2, in Trap 1 was Malbay Blaze. In 2, Winning Habit. Trap 3, Saline Mikko. Then in 4, Gay Time Joe. In 5, Deerfield Chant. And on the outside in 6 is Heskey. The favourite Malbay plays in one, he's quite well away, but number five is out fast. That's Deerfield Chant leading to the corner with number six Heskey going up well. Bit of trouble there in the bend, and it's Deerfield Chant showing in front into the back straight from Malbay plays in second. Saline Mikko now in third, a few lengths back, but it's Malbay plays challenging into the third bend, getting up the inside of Deerfield Chant. Now just edging on from Deerfield Chant, and it's Malbay plays in front on the final bend from Deerfield Chant. Number three, Saline Mikko putting in a run, but coming to the line, it's Malbay plays in front. And Malbay Blaze, the winner of the first heat from Deerfield Chant and Saline Mikko in a time of 28.71. On to heat five, where in trap one we had the ideally drawn Long Valley Max. In two was St. Luke's Boy. Trap three, River Flight. Then in four came Corner Trooper. Five, Barefoot Joe. And six, Matt's Picture. 
hot favourite this time, again in the red, was Long Valley Max, he's out fast, the outside pair slowly away, but it's number four corner trooper, going up well, but Long Valley Max shows the way around the corner, runs a bit wide, and St Luke's Boy moves through in second, down the back, and it's Long Valley Max in front, number two Luke's Boy chasing hard, but can't close this gap, Long Valley Max is a strong stare, when he's in front he takes some beating, three in front, coming onto the last corner, Long Valley Max in front, St Luke's Boy second, Barefoot Joe, putting in a run in third, but it's Long Valley Max hitting the line, the winner there of Heat 5. And the result, the winner was Long Valley Max from St. Luke's Boy, while in third place, Barefoot Joe, in a time of 28.67. Heat 6. In trap 1 here, we had Sammy's Rock. In 2 was Pilot Alert. Trap 3, 4 for fun. Then the big fella Sonic Flight in trap 4. Trap 5, Hard Talking. And on the outside in 6, Heavenly Zeus. The favourite here, Sonic Flight, running from trap four. Well enough away, crowded there early, and it's number two, Pilot Alert, going up the inside, with four for fun on the outside, but on the corner, trouble there, and it's Sonic Flight back and forth, and plenty to do, off the second bend, and Pilot Alert going on now, from number five, Hard Talking in second. Sonic Flight just moving into third place now, as they hit the second last bend, and it's Pilot Alert out front, from Hard Talking in second. Here comes Sonic Flight with his run, moving up to take second place, but he's not going to catch this one in front. Pilot Alert coming to the line, winning that one impressively. Pilot alert, the winner from Sonic Flight in second, hard talking third, the time 28.66. Heat 7, another one of the fancied runners in this one. In trap 1 we have Sandy Hill Boss, in trap 2 here is Brunswick Buddy, trap 3 is Athboy Vintage. In four, the favourite Premier County. Then in five is Cool Mohan Prince. And on the outside in six is Lark Hill Low. Premier County in four gets away quite well. Racing up his kennel companion, Lark Hill Low, coming up the outside in second place. Into the corners, Premier County in front from Lark Hill Low in second. Premier County from Lark Hill Low. Heading down the back, Sammy's Rock is in third. But now Lark Hill Low moves up to challenge Premier County. Premier holds him off, starts to pull away again on the second last bend. And it's Premier County going on by a length and a half from Lark Hill Low in second. And Premier County moving on here. Premier County from Lark Hill Low. Sandy Hill is running on on the far side. And it's Premier County the winner there of Heat 7. Premier County is in first place. Second, Sandy Hill boss. And in third was Lark Hill Low. The time, 28.69. And after the second round, Cashman's betting had Sonic Flight as the 7-2 favourite. Then it was 4-1 Premier County, 8-1 Long Valley Max, 11-1 Lemon Sash, you could have 16-1 Bar. Next week, excitement builds around the laurels as the remaining dogs battle it out for a place in the final. We bring you the quarter and semi-finals as well as a visit to the kennels of Dolores Ruth, who's been entrusted with the care of Nick Savage's hot favourite, Sonic Flight. We look at the pups on the pace at Ennis Gorthy for the Puppy Stake Final and at Harold's Cross, the final of the Bagot Racing.com Irish Grand National.